computer systems architecture. So different operating systems for different kinds of computer environments. So most systems use a single general purpose processor. Most systems have special purpose processor as well. Okay, one main CPU which manages the computer and runs user apps. Other specialized processor, disk controllers, GPUs, etc., do not run user apps. Okay, now for the multiprocessor systems, it increased throughput. Okay, faster execution, but not 100% linear speed up. Next would be the economy of scale, peripherals, disks, memory shared among processors, and increased reliability. You've got something like failure of CPU allows or slow system don't crash it okay redundant processing provides system of checks and balances so graceful degradation or degradation of fault tolerance so there are two types okay so you've got the asymmetric multiprocessing wherein each processor is assigned specific task okay and symmetric multiprocessing each processor performs all tasks now i have here an example of symmetric multiprocessing architecture okay so you've got processor zero and processor one here sharing the main memory each cpu has their own register and cache but the main memory are shared how about on the dual core design? So multi-chip and multi-core. So systems containing all chips, chassis containing multiple separate systems. Okay, so something like we have one physical processor virtually divided or virtually having multiple cores. In this case, we've got dual core. Okay, CPU core zero has their own registers and has their own cache. And so with the core one but they share an L2 cache, okay, leading to the main memory. For the non-uniform memory access system, okay, so one core could switch, okay, from one CPU to the next, okay? So something like, okay, so I have here memory zero and I have memory one here. The CPU is accessing the memory okay in non-uniform fashion all right clustered system so independent systems with shared common storage and connected by a high-speed LAN working together okay so special considerations for access to shared storage are required we have this uh, distributed lock management as our collaboration protocols. So a good example of this is the implementation of the storage area network, okay? So it provides a high availability service which survives failures. So there are two types for clustered systems. You've got symmetric and asymmetric clustering. So asymmetric has one machine in hot standby mode, while symmetric has multiple nodes running applications monitoring each other, okay? So some clusters are for high-speed performance computing or HPC. Applications must be written to use parallelization, okay? Some have distributed lock manager or DLM, okay, the distributed lock management to avoid conflicting operations. So this is an example of cluster systems we have these computers sharing a storage area. And this storage area network here are network of hard disks, okay, so which are being shared by a computer on the given infrastructure. Next, PC motherboard. So consider the desktop PC motherboard with a processor socket shown below. 
So you've got your processor socket, you've got the memory slots there, and then these are the buses. So this board is a fully functioning computer once its slots are populated. Something like if you're going to install your RAM here, you've got, for instance, uh, the PCI, but then we already have our memory or the display interface here, just plug in the keyboard, okay? So even the lowest cost general purpose CPU contains multiple cores. Some motherboard contain multiple processor sockets. More advanced computers allow more than one system creating a NUMA system. Okay. So basically, if you have nothing to install here, like you don't want to use your display adapter and you use this instead, then that would make it operational. Okay.